feel good today. I feel good. It's been a long weekend. I feel like the weekend's been longer than um, it, it's needed to be. A lot of eventful things happened this weekend that have me feeling incredible on this Tuesday afternoon. You know, they tell you when you're coming up that you can be anything. They, they tell you you can be the president, you can be an astronaut, you can be a lawyer, a doctor, a police officer, and you believe them up until you get to about 12, 13 years old and you start being a little bit more realistic. It's only after you accomplish something great that that feeling is put back into your chest and, and, and you get a, a whole new sense of motivation and skills out of nowhere. Yes, something happened over the weekend and I'm being extremely vague in describing it because because I don't want to be called a liar, but I feel like I found my purpose. I feel like I've been, I feel like I found what I've been put here to do and I'm going to do it to death. So never let someone tell you what you can or can't be because you can do anything. All right. You can do anything. Let's, let's get back to the humble beginnings, which, which, which is the platform we know as songs I'm listening to. So I have a good amount of things to talk about before we get into the playlist as far as uh, music news is concerned. So uh, let's let's hop into it. First piece of information is we finally have a confirmed date for Eminem's new revival album, December 15th. That is right. I don't know why he's been toting all this medicine and all these doctors. Uh, maybe, you know, he's, he's referencing himself. He's about to revive himself. Something happened. I don't know. I'm hoping this is going to be one of Eminem's greatest attempts. And uh, I wouldn't be mad, you know, if later on down the road we found out this was his last album for a while. I don't think it'll be his last album ever, but I think it'll be his last one for a while, hopefully. And uh, hopefully he goes out with a bang for this one. Was a little underwhelmed by the lack of excitement for Brock Hampton, Saturation 3. Um, I know people all over the world have been covering this Eminem news, but I feel like if people cover X, then they should know who Brock Hampton is. Like, I don't understand. I do realize though, they, they have a different demographic. I mean, Brock Hampton is kind of like odd future the right way. So oddly enough, you know, since we're on the topic of Brock Hampton, I feel like uh, these next few topics I'm about to talk about are things that I've actually mentioned in previous videos, like Brock Hampton breaking up or this being their last studio album. That's right, December 15th marks the final studio album for the group we all know as Brock Hampton. Now, in my video called Is Brock Hampton Releasing Too Much Music, I specifically asked the question what they were doing with these projects and with these bodies of work. And everybody in the comments treated me like I was crazy or like I was insane. For asking the question, is a group like this gonna have it in them to continue? A group with so many members, a group with so many different styles, a group with so many different colors. Like it makes sense that they would eventually break up at one point. Now, if you're asking me, I think this was planned. I think, you know, them them wrapping up the final saturation and having certain members split up or split apart is reasonable, okay? You can't keep a group with that many members going for forever. After a certain point or after maybe they've made so much money, they're going to realize like, hey, we need to make sure that, you know, we're, we're progressing, we're, we're doing something bigger for the future. Because I'm sad to say groups don't last. They really don't. You know, they become stale, they become formulaic, they become... Uh, standard and, and they develop a pattern. Brock Hampton coming out with a saturation one, two, and three all within the same year. I mean, I'm sure that that fear lingered in. Another point I mentioned in that video was that it would make sense that if the group were to continue, uh, that they would be releasing music, you know, and, and theming it based off each member. That way we got a little bit more information on who's doing what, who's involved in what, who came from where. But if they're going to split up and do it on their own, I don't have a problem with that either. I mean, I'd love to hear a solo project from Amir. All in all, I would say the fan base shouldn't really treat this as if it's a negative. I think the crop uh, within Brockhampton is strong enough to continue projects on their own. I wouldn't be worried about what they uh, have to offer. I would be worried about what they are uh, going to do thematically with their projects and sonically, maybe they're all gonna go back to the same producer. But um, as far as versatility and style is concerned, I think I think they'll be able to handle themselves, hopefully. And uh, I'll definitely be here to, to, to cover whatever music they release uh, solo-wise. But I knew it was unrealistic for a group like this to continue or, or have extreme longevity, which is why I'm glad they're making this move. And I think it was planned. So Brockhampton fans, please don't be sad. I think they're gonna do something really incredible soon. Guess who took the bait after my Lil Pump Gucci Gang is an easy target video? Guess who took the bait? Joiner Lucas. He is the specific person I referenced in that video for rappers going 
at artists who they know they are lyrically far above. Then what do we get a couple days after I make the video? Joyner Lucas, Gucci Gang Remix. Within the Gucci Gang Remix, he's dissing Lil Pump. Like, come on. I can't make this up. It just, it randomly comes. But Joyner had a great moment earlier. He got a he got a really incredible moment on the perception each race has of one another. I think that was a great move for him. But just after that, he does the same thing he did on that Mask Off remix on this Gucci Gang remix. And even worse than that, I like the original Gucci Gang better. I read on one of the comments of the remix video, it says, when a Christian rapper goes a little bit harder than you expected him to. That's essentially what it is. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I was listening to it, and, and I thought to myself, this is, you know, mildly entertaining because it's someone taking a beat that is very popular, uh, doing their own version or rendition of it, and then kind of dissing the originator of it, you know? Which wouldn't be a big deal to me if the person dissing this artist didn't know already before dissing them that they could win in a rap battle. It's like stealing cars just for the purpose of driving them and then returning them afterward. Like you're not getting anything done, Joyner. Like I, I know, I already know you can rap. Like he says in the song, it will increase his popularity, hopefully, it will. I'm, I'm glad he's gaining more popularity, but he's doing nothing in the process and he's just ruining original songs to me. These remixes are not good to me. I don't find them enjoyable. I would not return to them. I like Joyner when he's at his most original, when he's at his best, and, and when he's doing something that is an idea that's based off of his own mind, like it being completely flushed out by his own thought process, which is why the video he did earlier last week was so incredible. So I, I like Joyner. I, I would listen to the song once, I wouldn't return to it. I think the love for Gucci Gang is the point that you don't have to pay attention to it. Uh, Joyner's version pretty much forces you to pay attention to it or else it's not enjoyable at all. But the other tracks I've been listening to, of course you guys know, I've been, uh, I've been all over this Miguel album. I think he exists within a very nice space of alternative R&B. He actually goes above and beyond what I feel is required of the average alternative R&B artist by incorporating elements of soul and rock, psychedelic vibes throughout his entire album. I think he's one of the few artists that does this really, really well without sounding boring and incorporating really strong vocals. I think he and SZA are, are really taking this alternative R&B wave and pushing it or at least further beyond what I felt it was capable of. Now, it wasn't the best album I heard all year, but it definitely was probably one of my favorite listens on camera. Uh, uh, that's something you can I think that might be one of my favorite tracks like throughout the year like I haven't I haven't listened to a song so much in such a short period of time and 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 I don't even know how long like nothing I've listened to has this amount of catchiness to it I feel like I'm in my Dominican roots and and I'm just dancing with all my kinfolk and there's sweat everywhere there's sweat everywhere everywhere that's not even the only hit Miguel has on this project Harem, I told you about Harem. I told you what was gonna happen with Harem. I already messed up. I already messed up to that song. I'm just waiting for the call. Just follow me, follow me, follow, you. follow me, just where you wanna be, you wanna be. My soul, my soul, Miguel. Jeez, you gave me so much material. I love you for this. Please listen to this man's album if you have not already, because it sounds great. If you want to kind of know the negatives about it too, you can go to my review for it. Uh, the next album I wanted to give some shine to was uh, the, the Roy Woods Say Less album, which was pretty underwhelming to me. I didn't really like it like that, but the point of these playlist videos is to hopefully highlight some of the good points that an album might have, even if as a whole, I was a little bit indifferent toward it. It gives me an incentive to come back to an album and appreciate some of the core values that the album may have gotten right, 
Um, just because an album is, you know, uh, generally not well done doesn't mean there aren't any good songs. And I feel like, you know, incorporating some of them into these playlist videos would give people more incentive to go back to the project and listen to some of them. Roy's album was, uh, meh. Nothing too special about it. Nothing, you know, horribly bad about it, I would say. But it's just meh. And after hearing it a couple more times over the weekend, I'm still not feeling it like that. However, the one track, a Little Bit of Lovin', Oh yeah, I'm feeling that one. Make sure that you got all your plans done right. Cause I'm not sure. I love it. A little bit of something like me. Now wait till you get used to me. And um, this is probably a bad idea for the next thing I'm about to give you, but uh I know most of you have already heard Marshall Mathers LP, but I've been listening to it in preparation for revival. Now the the worst part about doing this is setting your expectations because listening to Marshall Mathers LP, that's a certain level of greatness that may never be reached again. And I'm listening to it in preparation for a revival, which is a horrible idea, but uh, just go back and give Marshall Mathers LP a listen because I think it's a, an amazing, and a legendary album. This is a complete detail of Eminem's life. Marshall Mathers. To back with this pack of zigzags and most meanest MC on this on this earth and since put you to leave me alone when you freak see me out in the streets when I'm eating a bee and my daughter did not come and speak to me. I don't know you and no, I don't owe you a motherfucking thing. I'm not Mr. Kiss on empty. No patience is in me, and if you offend me, I'm lifting you ten feet in the air. I don't care who was there and who saw me destroy you, will call you a lawyer. You a lawsuit, I'll smile in the courtroom and buy you a wardrobe. Prepare yourself, cause I knew Eminem album is coming. And and I don't want anybody looking at me talking about I wasn't prepared for him. I didn't know he was gonna do that. I wasn't ready. Like, get ready. You got enough time. Get ready. You got a week and a half. Get ready. Brock Hampton and Eminem on the same day, FML. But we're gonna get through it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, leave your comments down below in the comment section. Where else would you leave them? Uh, let me know what you've been listening to. And I'll see you for another songs playlist again uh, after the 15th of December. Because I'm definitely going to be putting a lot of songs on there. It's been Sean C. And I'll see you next time. Peace.